Hello, and welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, part of OU Health. Um, our case today is uh, one that is uh, uh, rather dear to me and uh, comes from uh, my experience uh, uh, working with colleagues in Vietnam. Uh, the patient is a six-year-old, six, excuse me, six-month-old baby uh, who is presented to uh, medical care with uh, several masses in the liver and apparently uh, failure to thrive, difficulty feeding, um, and some evidence uh, clinically that he is developing heart failure. Uh, the radiographic uh, images are quite striking. As you can see, he has several large uh, masses, several centimeter uh, size masses of big nodules uh, in the liver here on ultrasound. And uh, as you can see on a CT scan, uh, his liver is enlarged and uh, some of these nodules uh, are displacing uh, the normal liver parenchyma uh, considerably. Uh, and they're hypo, uh, hypo dense. Well, uh, pediatric liver lesions are not uncommon. Um, and the most common things that we encounter there probably are vascular lesions, uh, which include hepatic hemangioma, infantile hemangioma, uh, and so-called rich syndrome, rapidly involuting congenital hemangioma. Uh, there are some variants, multifocal and uh, diffuse uh, variants of uh, these as well. In addition, focal nodular hyperplasia and somewhat older children can develop and mesenchymal hamartomas can at times have uh, uh, present in the liver as uh, masses, usually not multiple, however. Hepatoblastoma is the most frequent malignant tumor that we encounter uh, in the pediatric liver, uh, but there are others uh, such as rhabdomyosarcoma, angiosarcoma, rhabdoid tumors, embryonal sarcoma, and metastatic neuroblastoma uh, sort of round out the list. Uh, given this patient's history of uh, apparent uh, heart failure, um, it was felt that he was probably in this category of uh, uh, vascular lesions uh, leading to significant right to left shunting. So uh, the patient came to surgery and a portion of the uh, lesion was excised. Uh, and here we see this nice, uh, very nodular appearance, somewhat pale, very uh, pinkish uh, surface color um, uh, from the liver and then a high power microscopy view. Uh, we ended up pu publishing this case, which as you can see in Pediatric Blood and Cancer uh, back in 2010, uh, in part uh, because of the uh, unique therapeutic uh, intervention that uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Zhuan in uh, Hanoi uh, uh, used with this patient. Uh, to uh, produce a very, very favorable response. And so I was reminded of this case because uh, uh, not too long ago, he sent me a follow-up photo of this uh, young patient now entering college. So here's a representative section of the uh, tissue that was uh, sampled at that time. And as you can see, we have a little bit of normal liver parenchyma here at the periphery, uh, but we have this very, uh, uh, sort of Swiss cheese-like, uh, sieve-like uh, pattern of uh, <clears throat> mixed uh, nodular and uh, semi-solid uh, vessels. Um, here we see the periphery, the margin with the surrounding liver, somewhat compressed and nodular. And we can see that uh, in this lesion, there are uh, a few larger vessels and a few entrapped uh, biliary structures. So this probably representing um, native um, uh, portal tracts uh, with biliary structures and artery and a vein. Uh, and then we have the tumor here, which uh, shows this uh, rather um, uh, sieve-like pattern of uh, spaces, some of which have red cells in them, uh, but many which, of which do not have uh, very much in the way of uh, uh, red cells uh, within them. <clears throat> As you can see, the cytology is fairly bland. Uh, the uh, nuclei are uh, not particularly uh, atypical. Uh, there were no mitotic figures identified in this uh, lesion. Um, and so we rendered a diagnosis of hepatic hemangioendothelioma. 
Uh, now, I think in today's world, the patient, uh, especially given the uh, heart failure symptoms, would probably be treated with some combination of steroids and propranolol, uh, possibly other interventions. Uh, but because of uh, the unique situation where this patient was involved, he was uh, treated with uh, curcumin, which is known to have some anti-angiogenesis uh, capabilities acting through uh, NF-kappa-B. Um, and uh, he obviously had a very remarkable uh, response. So infantile hemangiomas, I mentioned, about 20% of uh, liver tumors uh, are this, fall into this category. And most typically, they present in the first six months of life. Very slight female predominance. And uh, it's a minority that develop high output heart failure. Uh, however, some can even develop Casabac Merritt syndrome, Merritt syndrome with uh, coagulopathy due to platelet sequestration and so forth. These are usually cytologically bland with uh, small capillary-like spaces and generally not engorged with blood. As we saw, many of them can have uh, interspersed bile ducts and at the periphery, some entrapped hepatocyte sites. Uh, rarely, you'll see intraluminal hematopoiesis as the body attempts to respond uh, or perhaps uh, as a carryover from a fetal condition. Uh, importantly, these uh, lesions, if, as expected, would be uh, positive with uh, markers CD34 and CD31, uh, but the uh, majority of the ones, especially the multifocal ones, are also positive with uh, GLUT1 if you happen to have that in your uh, laboratory. So I thought maybe for comparison, we could look at some of the other vascular lesions that are occasionally seen in the liver, um, maybe not necessarily in the pediatric uh, neonatal group, uh, but here's a nice example of a cavernous hemangioma, which as you can see has many dilated vascular spaces, almost all of which are engorged with uh, uh, red cells. Uh, they also would tend to have very uh, bland cytology, as you can see here, and most of them would be uh, positive with uh, uh, the endothelial markers uh, that we have indicated. So typically, these are not a diagnostic problem, um, so occasionally you might get, obviously, uh, bleeding or other complications. Uh, another... Uh, thing that I, I think is important to think of is uh, that there are a variety of variants of this uh, hemangioendothelioma uh, in the pediatric uh, age group. And uh, these include the focal versus the multifocal versus the more diffuse type of uh, processes. Um, and these um, generally, the latter two usually develop after birth, whereas the focal lesion Um, and cutaneous lesions, the rapid the association of cutaneous lesions is seen, again, more frequently in these two. Um, staining, or excuse me, uh, radiographic features um, may be somewhat helpful. Uh, immunochemical staining, again, both of the uh, larger lesions would be positive with GLUT1. Um, and, uh, High output uh, issues uh, become a problem with either situation. Uh, here, as I've indicated, the standard treatments, usually propranolol, sometimes uh, steroids. Um, some of these patients, some of these will involute spontaneously, which uh, may be a challenge in the decision, uh, largely based on what sort of comorbidities they are experiencing as well. Um, so, um, this is an example of what some of these cutaneous lesions, this is an example of a rapidly emerging cutaneous uh, uh, of the neonatal period uh, that can be associated with these lesions as well. So uh, the other lesion in the differential is the mesenchymal hamartoma, which sometimes can have a variable amount of uh, fat, excuse me, a variable amount of vascularity. But as I think as you can see here, uh, in this example, uh, there are trapped islands of uh, liver cell with the uh, surrounding uh, uh, loose uh, mesenchymal tissue uh, with a mixture of vessels of varying size um, and uh, occasional uh, uh, residual bile ducts that stuck in that structure as well. So a much more hematomatous inflammatory picture uh, than the uh, 
uniform uh, vascular uh, type. So our final final diagnosis on this case was uh, infantile hemangioendothelioma or infantile hemangioma uh, multifocal. And this uh, particular patient, based on the radiographic appearance, was uh, fairly early onset. Uh, and again, with a wonderful uh, therapeutic response to the curcumin um, and uh, supportive uh, therapy. Well, thanks so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this uh, uh, unique case uh, in the pediatric uh, file. Uh, if you like this, please uh, hit that like button and uh, share it. Uh, let some of your friends know what you enjoyed watching. And of course, we always uh, invite you to subscribe uh, so that you'll catch uh, future releases from our channel. We continue to explore new topics uh, centered around uh, the surgical pathology side of things. And there always are new surprises awaiting. So until next time, once again, uh, thanks.